Somebody clap your hands and give the Lord praise again. Come on, do better than that. Do better than that. Before you sit down, we've already done it, but I want you to hug people, hear the word of the Lord longer than two seconds and tell them I want you to get a miracle tonight. Would you do that? Just hug them longer than two seconds. Sound man, give me a little more volume than you gave anybody that ever preached in here. Amen. Amen. Thank you. That's better. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. Give me give me about 12 minutes to set to set my own climate. Stop that. First of all, I'm going to ask that a few of you pray for me. I'm having sinus issues right now. Talk to me, somebody. And I'm a black man and I get sleepy when I have sinus issues. Even though I'm a prophet, I'm not deep till later. Right now, I have to make sure that I didn't come to just have foreplay with this ministry. Because this could be for me, if I was in the flesh, a marketing moment. Anyone that steps into this pulpit could use it as a performance to get more dates. I try not to allow crowds to, I need about 15 minutes to bore you, but just stay with me. Try not to let crowds move me. When I was young, I wanted to be an R&B singer, even though I'm a fourth generation pastor. When I pause, 50 of y'all talk. Just 50. Can I get 50 of you to be on my side for a minute? Y'all helping me get over my sinus issues. Now, don't think, I start like this in everybody's church. Black, white, Hispanic. I don't pull out with, lay your hands on side. I can, I can, I can. No fancy cliches. And my brothers, for you that are over 40, was the first New Jack group singing group called Guy. Shh, 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 don't tell them. Ooh-wee, them guys. And I was the singer of the family, and then along came Aaron, Damien, there's nine of us. I'm the eldest of all nine. I'm also, I think I'm going to get put out this church, I'm also... Same mother and father, but I'm the only child born out of wedlock. Now you got to listen to true prophets closely because my psychic counterparts are a little different than I. Their gift works during money time. No relations at all. As a matter of fact, my gift doesn't even work if there's no praise in the building. No, no, you don't have to praise them. I'm telling you, through my 32 years of being filled with the Holy Ghost, that praise, I did two dissertations, Bishop, one on prayer versus praise. I won't talk about them because I'm not a grad of Princeton. He takes that light, but that ain't simple to me. And 
Praise is how I believe we talk to God and if we reach him like we should, prophecy is how he speaks back. All right, y'all not to, and I also, I, I do this everywhere, so just let me, death and life's in the power of the tongue, they that love it shall live by the fruit thereof, which means on the tip of your tongue is either your funeral or your future. And a closed mouth looks like a casket. And a lot of people don't know that you're choking on the home because you didn't praise them, so it's stuck in your throat. Right here. And I believe that, hmm, that even though he's brought me here to preach and or to minister, and I'm very grateful, and even though people have just started across the country dial text prayer lines as if we just started praying, we don't have no praise lines. I just want to throw some things out there to see if 50 of you will talk to me and make me feel welcome in Nashville. God inhabits the praises of his people. He does not inhabit preaching. He uses it to increase your faith. Faith cometh by hearing. He does not even inhabit prayer because you can pray and miss it. But you can't praise and miss a darn thing in this world because that's his residence. And I became a praiser. I was always a denominational praiser, which means we didn't praise past crazy. Praise was always decent. Like some of you are praisers, but most of you don't know it ain't worship until you continue when the music stops. Mm -mm. David was a musician, but when he retrieved God's, God's covenant ark back, he didn't wait on music to dance in the street. Mm -hmm. 50 folk are praying for me, I promise you. And, and the dance in the street was indecent. To where his bougie wife, Lord, the 50 people out of thousands that talked to me, let them be debt free by the end of August. And some people don't believe it. You can't impart what you're not a part of. So I am debt free. Not by preaching, but by proper stewardship and praise. I don't have no bills. I'm free from sin and from debt. And 85 cent, I am, and 85 percent from people. Still got a few folk I need some help with. But I became, y'all pray for me, an unusual praiser when I had a stroke 18 years ago. Collaborate with me and talk to me. Somebody shout hallelujah three times real loud. And I wish it was a little louder because I was going to say every young person with a student loan was about to get a miracle from God. But see, that sound. That particular sound is what they did when the walls of Jericho came down. They did not pray those walls down. He did not sermonic preach those walls down. Which means, I think I've learned one of your secrets. I've been trying to pick your brain, but I recognize you're such a genius that you're only going to give me enough to want more. <laughs> but I think I understand Mount Zion's approach to catching so many fish, because this, this is like an aquarium. 
This ain't no fish bowl, you know something? You're just like, got some big whales, some sharks. And then folk will get jealous of your leader, but the scripture lets me know this, and I'm going to see if ten folk catch points as I go along. He said to the people that learn how to effectively shout, and the black church has taken shout and put it in the feet as a dance. When it was never made to be at the bottom. Shouting was always... It was... Be, be seated. It was never meant to be decreased to the lowest part of the physical anatomy. But the truth is, theoretically, for all of you pastors, even my friends, Moore and, and, and Apostle Kerry, Jacksonville and Eldridge Shallow, Beaumont, Texas, and all of y'all, it, it, is, it is important that you recognize this and then your churches are going to grow after midnight tonight. He says, he says, to those who shout the loudest, the city belongs to you. Shout for the Lord has given you the city. What's heard in ministries is too much swag. Too much. Too much culture. Y'all going overboard with cool culture. He said, through the Makasia, through the mouth of Joshua, shout for the Lord has given you the city. Which means the church is going to belong not to pastors who preach the best unless your church would be packed. Your preaching has to make your members respond. And when they leave church and go to the grocery store while going down aisle three, they got to feel a quick jump. They have to hear your voice in their ear. Bills paid, debt canceled, children delivered, bodies healed, and need a praise break on the job. The city belongs to the leader that will not be up to prove that he or she can preach. But that they can give God through the people the glory that he rightfully deserves. If you need a miracle, shout hallelujah three times. Bless his holy name. Be seated. Got one more rule and I'm going to keep going. Don't stand up if you ain't going to speak up. No need to change your posture and not change your verbiage. The devil's never been afraid of a stance. See? When y'all shout hallelujah like that, I won't be able to do this often because I have a message and I have a few things to say within a short span here. And maybe Bishop one day, if he like us, will bring us back to finish this. But when y'all were screaming, right, I was looking at the bald-headed gentleman behind you that looked just like you, which means you're all pouring on him. And I keep hearing the Lord say, I'm creating a Bradshaw house. Now be seated. Now, please, let me explain this. That wasn't my gift. That was your mouth. Because when you praise up, God speaks down. And it was not during any offering. And you need to sow seed. Eight of his disciples did he choose with his presence. Two he chose with his touch. The last two he told the other two, go get your brother Andrew, he sits under a tree. So for some of you that think he don't know you, he's just here to show you, he has not been ignoring any of you. But for those who praise on this, you are at the conclusion of the worst season of your life. Be seated. When I say be seated, I need you to move quickly. I 
I'm going, please be seated. Now we're going to be up, down, quiet, because we have to do a lot, so please be seated. I'm going to suppose that you're his wife. Because the Lord's not showing me, but he's, but leave him, leave him, leave him, but he's giving God worship. So I'll talk to you and you can repeat it, but he's coming into a mighty harvest, you and he. But the Lord said, tell you, because of your faithfulness to the call and to this ministry, that some of the wealth, if God delays, because some people don't understand prophecy, so I got to explain it later in my next visit, because they think it works like magic, but it doesn't. But if God delays his coming, because I'm from old school, that's how the old saints were said, if the Lord delay his coming, which means prophecy does not cancel death, it is what comes if you continue to live. See how folk got quiet? Death and Jesus coming is the only two things we have no power over. But the Lord, I just heard something. But the Lord said, tell you, he's going to give some of the wealth to y'all, but he wants you to save it, and it's going to be given to a person named Tatum. Now, if you don't talk, I can't help you. Who's Tatum? That's your only child? That child is going to be supernaturally rich because that child should have not lived. I need to tell you something. That child should have killed the mama on the table. Now what I'm trying to tell you. You're a modern day Sarah, believe it or not. And the Lord says, as long as you raise that child in the fear of God, the child is going to be one of the trendsetters of how to keep praise alive in a day where a generation is letting it die. They think music is praise. Music is an accommodation. Y'all need to praise is what you do when the music stops and when you go back to when I think of the goodness of Jesus and Y'all pray for me, I feel help. My soul cries out, hallelujah. And that's why I give him those words, because that's the highest praise. It even creates the highest salary without an education. So the Lord bless you. The Lord bless Brian. The Lord bless Tanisha. The Lord bless the whole Bradshaw family. Everyone else may not get a prophecy, but y'all are proof that he still speaks. And when one gets the bread, we can get the crumbs. Y'all get the bread. Be seated. So in short, you can see I was cured from the stroke. I was cured from the stroke. But Pastor Stephen Brown, the covenant was, I could never allow a church to change how loud I get. And that I'd be bold enough to say whatever God says unless I'd be back in the wheelchair. The real me, my degree is in psychology, is laid back. My outward personality, some of y'all are bobblehead, but my outward personality looks like I'm an introvert. I mean extrovert, but I'm really introverted. I'd like to be by myself for several reasons, especially church folk. Don't take it wrong. And that's the way I was just raised, being an ex-pharmaceutical salesman from the block of Brownsville, Brooklyn, is we don't do too much talking. That's why we don't go to jail. And you don't mess with needy women who will drop dime when the feds. Now let me stop. Y'all can tell I've been watching too much power. Y'all just pray for me. I've been watching too much power. I got the Holy Ghost. I, I, I got too much. You know, shout hallelujah again, everyone. 
You know, pastor, you're going to think I'm crazy. You may not move. You don't have to because you're the presiding prelate of the full gospel church of the world, international, and you're my bishop at this time. And what I want to say to you is I don't understand fully what's going on, but God says, I told, I said something five minutes ago, sir. I said, prophecy does not cancel death, but it can uh, push it back. Let me say it again. It doesn't cancel because Hezekiah did die. But after he got 15 years, you agree? Good, because I don't know how many years, but your father getting some too. Because God said this week he should have died. Now I need to tell you. God said his heart is only working on one valve, one ventricle. This thing is... is is beating real slow as I'm standing here and that wouldn't be good news right now during your new promotion so the Lama Sika Baha why y'all quiet back there I did tell y'all I came from a storefront church didn't I On Tuesday night to Wednesday morning, death knocked at your father's door. And death is not a devil. God calls us home. See, we don't preach it right. To live is Christ, to die is gain. But when you love people, you can do something that will make God leave them around a little longer. And the Lord said, tell you, when 80 of the people from their full heart, not focus on them and praise for you, he says, tonight, 12 midnight, I'm going to cut his chest open and give him another heart. This does not cancel death, but it prolongs the living. Y'all, I don't hear Mount Zion. And I also tell people this, it's not praise if it's not heard. There's no such thing as silent praise. I praise them in my heart. No, from the heart, the mouth speaks. There is no such thing as silent praise. May, May God. I'm going to shift out of this. May God grant unto you the very desires of your heart, but not at the price of any more deaths. The Lord said, tell him that before this night is over, I don't know the real reason why you invited me. He has not shown me, but I thank you for doing this. But the Lord said, tell him when I have left this building for those who are with me, a portion of what I have in the gifts will stay with you. Because to lead full gospel, you're going to need it. Oh, y'all mighty quiet. Your eyes have not seen. Your ears have not heard. It has not, I feel the glory of the Holy Spirit. It has not entered into your hearts. The good things that God has in store for you. Because you walked up right before him. Somebody that believes you're going to another level, clap your hands and shout hallelujah. You may be seated. A lot of you are being interviewed by God for extreme wealth. I'm prophesying in a whole nother way. And the reason why some of you would know it's you is God says the way you know that your wealth is coming is that's the area you've been the most attacked in. And the reason why the devil won't release it is you have certain things you want to bless people with. And through you becoming a distributor, you help to prove that God exists. Wow. 
watch it, Joe. I want you. I want you to say these two words to your neighbor, and if they don't respond properly, don't get gangster, don't get upset. Just recognize that they're not where you are right now. But when you say it, because you don't know what you're going to say, if you feel it, it's going to come to pass. Just look at your neighbor and say, you're next. Just tell somebody, you're next. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All of y'all that feel crazy downstairs, just turn around and point upstairs and say, you're next! You that are upstairs, point downstairs and say, you're next! Yes! Oh, 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 oh Lord! Did y'all tell anybody? Did y'all tell anybody? You're next! Yeah! Oh, Lord. Did I tell you I'm from a sanctified storefront church? This whole section can fill my church. Right here. Be seated. There will be there will be some names even if i don't call you out he's calling you up the lord chooses a few to ignite the faith of many there's no way he's got to prove to all of you who you are by calling your name when your mama been calling you that all your life but there'll be people whose name i'm gonna call now very quickly if this person's in the building or watching by mount zion anywhere soon to be Mount Zion everywhere y'all didn't like that either he gave y'all the greatest church in Tennessee largest membership in 2% of the whole world then gave him the helm of the largest fast forward organization in the world all he has to do now is give him the world Touch somebody and tell them Mount Zion going global, baby. Mount Zion going global. And I know he may not understand this. Bishop Morton will clean it up, but I must do what I'm told to do. I'm going to say this for preachers and those who hear God daily. Mount Zion and the whole organization of Full Gospel are going to look like twins after this. Y'all catch that by next week. The Holy Spirit just spoke to me and said, Todd, you're too concerned about certain people's response. He said, disconnect from their faces. So let me do this. Any of you that really believe, even though we have an enormous amount of false preachers and prophets and pastors in this day, if you believe that there are still some real ones left and you account me for this moment to be one of them, the Lord said, if any of you that really know how to dance will get out of yourself and dance for somebody else, you'll have a miracle in 72 hours. You got 30 seconds. One, two, three, go!
Be seated, if you will, please. This is a night of prayer and prophecy and praise or whatever we called it. This is what God deserves. This is how we get miracles. This is how mortgages are burnt and bills are paid and tumors are dissolved and blind eyes open. It's only what we do for Christ. Be seated. Bishop, be seated, please. Can I use your hands? Because my hands are done for tonight. Because I don't really do a lot of that. I, I, I have two men that I want you to touch. When you touch them, they'll be cured from diabetes, lung issues, liver, pancreas, future cancer. When you touch these two men, they don't even know I'm talking about them. One you may have to go after, and that's fine, because this is what we do, the work of the ministry. We don't work it, we work ministry. You're going to lay hands on these people, and they're going to get an extension of life, even as your father. The first man is on the end of the third row. He has gray hair. The Lord said, when you touch him, I'm going to renew every organ in his body. And somebody better open your most shy. You better open your And the reason why I'm utilizing you is not because you're not my bishop, but when I leave, this stays. <laughs> to take full gospel to a place that's never been before, God has to give you something they've never seen before. You're about to get what I call, I wish somebody would catch it, the edge. God is allowing you to walk into his room of mysteries. The other man you need to touch, he doesn't know that he's supposed to die very soon. But now he's going to live because of the touch. He's in this section. He has, on, he has gray hair. He has glass. Wave like this, sir. You, he's rocking from side to side. Wave your hand so Bishop can see you. Yep, right there. When the Bishop touches you and we scream, by his stripes you are healed. And somebody with a lamosia on the side. The Bible said, these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. Y'all better talk up in here. They shall lay hands upon the sick. And the sick. The Lord said the reason why he made you do it for them is so he can qualify your father. They hugging up over there. They having church in that section. Be seated. Get your Bibles. Let me cut and paste this sermon. And bless the rest of you who think you needed a prophecy to get this answer. The Lord uses that to draw your attention. To let you know that for talkers, 50 of you, he still speaks even when the Bible's closed. When you don't have your book with you, thy word have I hid in my heart. And three words can move people that know God. And I'm going to say the three words to see if you know them. It is done. It is finished. It is well. It is mine. 
it is over. You don't need a whole paragraph. Scale, sometimes you don't need a whole paragraph. Just the right word at the wrong time. I told someone last night, for 50 of you who will talk to me for the next 35 minutes, but you must talk, the rest do what you want to do. Elizabeth, is there an Elizabeth in here? Oh no, that's too many. She said, hallelujah, she was like right here. Right there, who else? All right, do... Does any of the names, last names start with a D? No, no, I'm talking about first name Elizabeth. Oh, see, I knew you was trying to ease in there. I felt that. That yes was loud, but I, 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 I some. And I know the Pope ain't here, but if the last name Pope is here, you better run. And there's two of you. There goes one. Just run, baby. I don't, I'm not, just run back to your seat. I don't want to be given too many words. I got to preach. And there's not another Pope. As you run back to your seat, I want you to say you're buying your new house before the fall is over. Where's the other Pope? Too high up to come down? You don't want a miracle because you don't want to come all the way down? Which one is the Pope? Or all y'all Popes? Well, I don't want all of y'all, so one of y'all can run for the rest of y'all. I don't know why it wasn't the man. The man said, let them run. Mm. When the Pope started running, the Lord told me to tell 75 of you in here, because they ran, it's for them and you. Anyone you love who's in jail is getting saved and coming out. I figured. Oh, yeah, I figured. When the Pope started running, I saw a man in jail. Are any of you lady Popes married? I said, are any of you Popes married? You are? You are married now? Where is he? In jail. Okay. The Holy Ghost said, through our mouths, y'all read Acts 16, 25, and when they began to sing and to praise, immediately the prison doors were open. And some of y'all may not know it, God said, I'm about to save him before the mate kills him. Y'all ain't talking about so he is. And that goes for our families. If she gets the bread, we get the crumb. Sitting there, somebody get selfish now and tell them, I'm next. Forget you. I'm next. I'm next. 35 minutes. I'm surprised I was able to be seated to get this much done. Because I was telling God he's going to get me put out. Because I'm under instructions that I must follow. God, the pastor just freed me. He said, flow Todd, like he know me. Might as well, if he's going to ever be my bishop, I might as well start listening to him now, right? I'm here to preach for you, but I'm courting you. That's why I brought my preacher, so we find out whether this is a date for marriage. 
because I see the next king on the horizon and I'm trying to make sure that he's protected to take us to the next level. And everyone that was your hater will become your employee. Don't worry about that. The difference in you and some of the others, while I'm not with you, but I'm God's prophet for 10 folk who scream on this, is the reason why God didn't choose some of them is you, they were chasing the mic, you were chasing the mantle. And it's the difference. It's different when you want to be in charge from here versus from here I want to say this to those whose ears are keen now then I must read everything that you needed that you were looking for and couldn't find the Lord said don't worry by the end of the month it'll find you it will find you The Lord said, don't put forth no more effort. Watch the next three days shift some things around. Watch. Bishop knows my number. He going to call me or he might periscope us all. He working on 8,000 followers. How you got the largest church and the largest social media? And the baddest wife. And on the ebony. Hey, see. Somebody shout glory to God. Glory to God. Now, I don't want y'all to think prophecy is my highlighted gift. My highlighted gift is what I'm about to do right now. I am not a prophet who can preach. I am not a preacher for those who will talk to me who can prophesy. I'm a praiser that can do both. When your tongue is good at praise, God will make you anything you want to be, I promise you. He'll make your tongue so strong that it'll make the people forget your bad credit and say we can work it out. God is on the tongue of a praiser. Now, I don't need to go through all this. I asked God prior to me reading my text I was in the office you can attest to this Bishop and I want my 50 folk to talk like it's just us here I told you that I was in the office at the time when you were ready to leave God gave me something concerning you and you said well go on and write and the Lord said Todd prophetically speaking wait till y'all see how this sermon really align yourself but you gotta talk a little and you that can't talk and listen you be quiet but you that are from the hood that can talk be on the phone watch the baby y'all because i'm multitask i'm from the hood i'll be eating and watching the bill and i asked god prophetically from a different angle I always try to say something that other folk are afraid to say I said Lord if you chose Joseph Walker in the Bible day to be one of your disciples which one would he be he said Peter I said Lord he ain't no gangster he said no he ain't no gangster but he be Peter because when I think about Peter I think about carrying packing see no talkers from the hood they touched Jesus and Peter cut his ear off and God didn't say throw it away he said put it up for the time has not come see your members must catch this and jump if they love you the time for you to fight is over the time for them to throw their swords have come you have too much to do so you can't work and fight you can't work praise and fight you can praise like you're fighting and that may work but it's time for your Peters to sort up you've prayed for them now they need to pray for you if you're with me you're talking to me be seated you don't have to stand up unless you want to so I asked God in what manner in what way 
is Joseph Walker, Peter. He said two things from me. He said, when I met him, I had the same conversation I had with Peter. This is in a modern day form, so I need everybody that's with me to talk. He says, tell him, when I met him, I said in his soul, if you love me, feed my sheep. If you love me, feed my sheep. He did it a third time. Then he said, if you love me, feed my lamb. Which meant, I'm going to trust you with two generations. Uh-oh, it's getting real quiet. See, some folk are jealous because they want a pastor, but they don't love sheep. And we... I was informed that a certain TV network, not a not a fly by night a major network had your pastor in the meeting asking him to host a major show i can't tell you everything because certain things got to stay where it is but i need my 50 talking and the and the salary was seven figures seven looking for what seven i I get excited over six. Some of us need at least five. I'm talking, but that four, three, two, one got to go out the door because. And they pulled him in the meeting. But the issue with him, and it was not a reality beat up, embarrassed preacher show, was a healthy spin on ministry and life and family and etc. But the issue was the only slot they had, I'm going to see who gets this because you're going to be debt free, was he had to not be with y'all every Wednesday for a year. And he looked at them like a shepherd and said, I can't do this deal. I got to turn down. Why y'all quiet back? What's all that? People who don't praise are borderline demonic. That's why Satan's not in heaven, not over joint, weed, or sex. Heaven was void of worship, and God asked Michael, where's Lucifer? And he said, he built his own ministry. He said, I shall exalt my throne above yours. He said, kick him out. So refusal to praise is worse than weed. But listen. Oh, we can debate that on television. He turned it down and many people, me being one to an extent, was like, you're crazy. You've got executive pastors, you've got missionary saints and friends, you got me, you got Bishop Moore. You ain't got 52 preachers that can cover a Wednesday. You own the whole darn world. But he said, that's my people, which means he's Peter, if you love me. Turn down 750 and feed my sheep. High five somebody tell me you can't get no better than that. You can't get no better than that. Be seated. So to be that type of pastor, you have to first always remember what a person has to turn down. For eight folk who are in mid-age who, who, who know how to talk, talk to me while I'm easing into the sermon. You should not turn up till you turn something down. And the Lord said, tell a hundred of you, all of you that could have had money, but the way it was offered wasn't God and you walked away, it's about to come back to you. See, you can't turn up until you turn down. And some of you preachers ain't blessed because you're pastoring, but that's your second job. They didn't say amen now. Did... You shouldn't have to go on the road more than your home because when you effectively pastor, you first lose everything. And that's to prove that you're anointed. And then you start getting your money back. I hope one pastor run or jump because he wants a ministry because God lets your sheep have a lot of wool. Then he teaches you what to do with wool. But some of you that don't know, you keep pulling the wool over our eyes so that you can do what you got to do. 
your wealth is in your house look how quiet it got they're like what did he say so he became Peter then the second thing I wrote in the office just tonight about him for the 50 will still talk to me while the others have up and down moments he also told me that the reason why he has such a large ministry which will hardly ever be repeated by anyone even though it's a good barometer to gauge success by he said and no one should get jealous unless they're willing to go through the hell he experienced but he said the reason why he has something that looks like an aquarium full of fish because he's Peter I said what do you mean he said when I called him and he even graduated I stepped on his boat I went into his workplace and told him I need you to fish for me y'all oh y'all quiet and he said it's gonna be a little deep you gotta go way out there now oh, yeah. And because, I hope eight folk catch this, because he let down his net. Let me word it like this, because the front row full of important folk that don't talk. I've already recognized that. Come to my church for three weeks and see what happened. Because when I grew up, they put all the holy mothers and prayer partners down front. And the reason why pastors are being exposed is the enemy is breaking the front line. Quarterback can't get sacked unless the enemy with a position should come more responsibility and more worship. But let me get back here. Peter let down his net and he did it against his will. But he said now, Bishop, nevertheless, at thy word. I will let down the net and the Lord showed me that Bishop Walker has a very uncanniness of hearing God and doing things that other folk don't hear till a year or two later but he moves when the Lord says move and sometimes I'm gonna see if you catch it it affects his net now a net is not only what catches fish it is what is left after gross so he was willing to let down what he could have made to catch something now that will pay for him later you follow and some of you want the payment but you don't want to catch the fish so now you have a multiplicity a diverse uh, culture of a ministry that people are looking at but the issue is they'll never become you because they didn't launch out they continue, and I'm going to preach, to play in shallow water. I'll say this for three screaming preachers because they're missing it. You can't catch good fish in shallow water. That's why we're getting all the section eight. He's getting all the season straight. You follow me? You, you got to go out there. God wants to bless you at the end of Peter's obedience as your bishop did. I'm just giving you the new and improved definition of Bishop Joseph Walker. But when I get to his third Peter, that's when I'm going to dance for him. The new and improved also says this for folk who will jump who still won't jump. Because when you're a prophet, you have to do things that make you look foolish. And the foolish things confound the wise. Any office you sit under, you must take on its DNA. So tonight you have to be crazy. Because the stuff I'm saying won't make sense to an intellectual with no faith. But to folk with gifts that are broke, it makes a whole lot of sense. And that's this. When he caught the fish, the Bible said his net broke. But he still was able to bring in so much. I'm going to see who jumped. That his ship began to sink. And the Lord know that too much would have killed him. Peter didn't know what to do with it. But Jesus was on the ship and told Peter, if you want to enjoy it, give some to your partners. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And the Lord said, everybody that's ever partnered with him, I'm about to break your net. I'm about to. See, you've got to give some. Oh, y'all are quiet up there. The oil drips from the head down. So you know when your season's coming by how he's treating your pastor. Be 
be seated. So some of your salaries for my talk, because I'm, I'm about 20 minutes left deep. God is about to make me preach a sermon to him for you, for those who are educated but can talk, concerning how to bless you outside of your salary. He's going to make your life a mystery. He's going to finally prove to your family you ain't crazy for being a member of Mount Zion. All y'all do is have service. Go over there. Jump shout that man. God is about to shut up your enemies by giving you plenty. And you're going to pay some of them to shut up. Let me pay you. Let me pay you. Now in psychology, there's a little part that said folk that don't talk to you is because they're talking about you. And some of y'all ain't talked the whole service. You just been looking around like these folks screaming and jumping. So is their salaries. And I'm going to say this out of the top. When praises go up, prices come down. So if your money can't do it, your mouth can bring it all. Work for me, I just can't tell you. Now, the part of Bishop Walker that I want to share with you that you're going to now experience is found in Matthew 14, only three verses. Normally, I try to preach the whole Bible, three verses. Even if I don't love my job, I love my boss. Y'all catch that next week. Normally when, normally when we read this text for my two members now, we approach it from the backside about walking on water. Jesus, I'm going to test my audience. Jesus walked on water. But for those talking in my second row, that's not a miracle. I expect God to be able to do that. The miracle is when you do. The miracle is Peter. Uh, and some people in your new position expect you to sink. But God chose you out of everybody in the same boat. Oh uh, yeah, and said, Walker, step out here. But Lord, we're doing this transition during a storm. I think I told this. I told y'all don't stand up if you ain't gonna speak up, didn't I? But I think I shocked your senses now. You was like, now that's deep. Here we go. Why choose me at my best time during my worst season? And what they don't know that I told to my driver earlier, I, 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 I said these words for folk who will get louder and then you don't have to scream no more when I'm gone unless he tell you. And that's this and don't forget it. Peter walked on water while the storm was still in session. Some of you are not blessed because you're waiting for things to calm down. You, you just walk. You just... You, you, you want everything to... I'm going to move, but I got to raise a little more money. I got to wait a little longer. I will buy the house, but it's out of my range. It ain't out of your faith range. And if it's the one that turns you on, why would you turn it down? You can barely pay for the one you're in and God's telling you move. He don't make words according to worth. He makes room for him to get credit. If you stand up, you better speak up. If you stand up. If you sit down, you ain't cursed, but if you stand up, you gotta change everything. You're not going to be a Hasibo Koshia. Peter didn't wait till the sun came out. 
and the sea calmed down. Because at that time, he still, hopefully you told me, he could have stepped out and if he sank, he knows how to swim. He's a fisherman. But you can't swim against no storm. And the Lord said, tell the 50 people that went down the two who got a mouth after this service. While you're in the mess you're in, go get it. Go. Oh, some of y'all ain't got that, huh? We walk by faith. Not by what a thing looks like. About two months ago, I saw two girls jumping double dutch. They were turning the rope. And I went over, I said, I can jump. They said, Mr. You too old, you can't jump no double dutch. So I said, let her jump first. And they were doing two ropes, y'all gonna miss it. And the girl was doing this. You know, that swag move, that's double dutch move. See, some of y'all don't do that because you just a techie on. Yeah. And while she was doing it, I just ran in front of her and jumped in, right? And she said, how you jump in front of me? I said, your problem is you're taking too much time. You don't have the rhythm of what's going on. And some of you, you're still there where you were last year. See, you can jump single rope better. I hope somebody's screaming this because the rope's in your hand. But when God's about to give you double, he's got to take it out of your hand and tell you, come on. It's like a dare. I double dare you to buy a house without a job. I double dare you. Oh, some of y'all quiet now, huh? Be seated. The next two times you stand, we won't sit down no more. Sit down, sit down. So, we don't want to talk about Peter walking on water. Because we already know he did it. And for my 50 talkers who are talking, so will you. By the time September's here, you better jump in. And you better fancy it. Uh -huh. The Lord said for those who've been humble, it's time to show off. It's, it's time to show everybody, look what, look what God has done. Anybody that knows it's time for you to jump in this, jump three times like you're in the rope. Just get on up there. Some of y'all look crazy. See, you look crazy. But that's what the office of tonight is calling for. And the folk that are jumping that you looking at notice they ain't looking at you the praisers getting all the attention every time we how you stop my last approach now I don't know I used to have a fetish and a fantasy about preaching at Lakewood Church for real Joe Osteen until I got here. No, really, I put it on my list. Oh, but I feel like I'm there already. So this is my Bible. I can do what it says I listen. I want you to say these two words to your neighbor, then sit down with them and give me eight more minutes. Say, debt free. Now be seated just like that. Sit in that word. Rest in it. 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 
Be seated kindly. Be seated. Look at the Bible. So we have three verses. That's going to make me preach, sir. We have three scriptures only. I'm not going to, Dr. Eldridge Shallow, I'm not going to preach the back end. I'm going to preach the front. The part that people think has no revelation in it. Because people like to get to the height that don't help. But your end will only look as good as your beginning. See how most folk got quiet because... My three verses, verse 22. Is it going to show up on the screen? Because if so, I'm going to read it from the screen. If not, I'm going to put on my glasses because I can see in the spirit, but I can't see in the natural. And I'd rather see Jesus than you, but... Immediately Jesus made his disciples to get into the boat and don't go to the next verse until I tell you Immediately Jesus made his disciples get into a boat and go before him to the other side and he sent the what? Come on all y'all in the front get with it. He sent what? Now I'm looking at folk who like hype now you look like I done killed the service because you don't want to hear this But the first thing that'll make true people who love the Bible jump is this. And Bishop Walker and I talk after service. The first revelation in that verse is this. And I hope somebody get happy. And that is the God we've been serving has been making us wait. Now he's ready to do things immediately. He first wanted to see could you praise him with no evidence. Being inconvenienced. The second thing in the verse, be seated y'all, second thing in the verse, and Bishop, if anything makes sense, wave at me and I'll wave back unless you're ministering to your bigger church on the media. And that's this. This is the first time in Jesus' leadership that he tells his disciples to go somewhere ahead of him. He gives them, you better hear close, Curry, permission. And the reason why he does that for revelatory expression and those who will get happy is because he was making sure nothing behind you could follow. Decrease in company. When your season is shifting, so does your company. Y'all in? And your circle gets small. Oh, I can't hear you upstairs. It gets smaller. And when you're truly chosen for the screamers, you know you're chosen when you can do it by yourself. I'm coming over here because we got a lot of bobbleheaders, but they won't talk to me and I'm going to work with you. want to work with you. That's what my degree is in psychology. And that's what... Listen. The multi he sent the multitudes away. So all of you in the past three years that have been hurt and feel like you've been betrayed by people, they didn't mean to do it. The Lord did it. The Lord said, where are you going now? They can't handle it. I'm telling you now. Oh, y'all here. Said this journey is only for folk who want to live on the other side. Y'all you can't, you can't do it like you've been doing it before. You can't hang out with who you hung out before. You got to now read that. Reinvent, rebuild. And the way you know you're on the trip and pay for your ticket is even the folk you love, you are now not hanging with. You're making excuses. Listen, I'm good. I'm good, not hungry. And they've done nothing wrong to you. They're just not right for you. So because people who are really anointed and love God, love people hard, we never give up on, on, on them. They give up on us. And we let them back and we say sorry when we the one that didn't even do it. And the real issue is we there when they need us, but they ain't never there when we need them. And then the real issue for the women who will scream is this. You know when your future's ready, when your past wants you back.
when you see things from the past calling you you on my mind don't give it too much attention let them know i'm on a cruise can i call you back when i get where i'm going and if you want to hang out with me pay a price and meet me over there some folk are in your life as a stowaway they're not there to go with you they're there to get where they have to go because of you So let me rehash because I got two verses left. You know when you're moving in the right direction, when your circle without you starts getting smaller. And smaller, Bishop Lockett just gets smaller. Anybody in here so I know I'm preaching the right sermon, have you been losing interest in some people and some things but you still save enough to be nice to them but but you know it's gonna be okay cuz where you going next they can't afford to go where you're moving they'll know where you live but can't get past the gate right you're so mature that you can thank your baby's daddy and his new wife because you good now. See, some of y'all ain't ready for that, right? You never get worse after a storm. God has to give you something better. Yes, Lord. Verse 23. When I get to 24, I'm through. Verse 23. And when he, Jesus, had sent the multitudes away talk to me three of you he went up on the mountain by himself to pray let's stop there and let's extrapolate this from the text and see if preachers will start talking instead of getting new messages because if they went through enough storms they would have enough revelation but they wait for things to calm down And that's this hopefully you will get it Jesus is not praying for himself God needs no prayer so if he went to pray we are to assume from the text proper exegesis is that he went to pray for those who will talk to me for the people he sent ahead of him because he knows what they're about to experience and let me say this for the screamer you know you're gonna make it if God's praying for you God you might make it if your mama prayed for you. But if God says, Father. Now, I hear some deep religious witchcraft borderline tingent people. Because what you're saying is, ah, this is too much. God don't pray for people. The Bible says in another print, because you know the Bible, so you should talk to me. It says uh, that God told Jesus, your time to die is coming. I'm about to take you. Shall I take your disciples up with you? He says, I'll take them. Jesus said, no, leave them there, but keep them from the evil thereof. Then the disciples said, Master, why would you do this for us and leave us in such an evil position? And Jesus said, for those who will scream, I prayed for you. I prayed that your faith And the Lord said, tell folk who I'm a bless after August. Right now, as you're praising, I'm praying to the Father. Lord, would you bless them in 72 hours? Father, do it for me. I know they fornicated. I know some of them have lied. I know some of them have habits. But will you just do this for me? And God said, I have to. You died for them. And I made a vow to you that anything they ask in your name, I'll give it to you. That the Father, that the Father may be glorified. I can't hear no choir except when y'all sing it. Put the scripture up there, same one, 23, the B clause. Now when the evening came, help me preach it, he was. All of you that are helping me, watch how your bills change. I said he was. All of you that your, your com company and circles have diminished and decreased and you feel like you're in it by yourself, 
catch this and go crazy five seconds then I got one verse left and that's this you need to let the devil know even though I'm hurt and I'm going through I'm still a little educated and you need to let him know this I know for a fact that alone don't mean I'm lonely And right now, some of you are not lonely. You're like, I'm good. I'm taking myself to the movie. I'm taking myself to dinner. I'm looking good for me. And your haters don't like your new confidence. But they don't know. I have to praise him because I'm about to lose my mind. And I refuse to look like the hell that I'm going through. And I'm going to look it before I get to the other side. Yeah, you're alone. But you ain't lonely. You women who desire marriage, buy a ring for yourself. Then when the real man come, tell him, give you the money back and replace it. Set yourself up. See, to you it don't make sense. But that's a move of faith. He was there alone. He had sent the people away from you that he feels is not equipped to go with you. Now, I got one verse left, Shallow, because I see you standing there praying. I don't know what you're doing, but I know you're praying for me. But hear ye clearly, all of you here, don't forget this. The Lord, well, let's just go to the verse. Verse 24, I try not to get there this quick, but the boat was now in the middle of the sea can you go back to 22 one more time can you go there because y'all are experts immediately jesus made the king james would say constrained another version would say ordered the lord told me to tell educated praises this who mostly don't scream or shout because our intelligent fights that activity but now let the activity speak to intelligence and remember this the Lord made sure this time you're gonna make it because he made you get in something that only a few people can get in he, he constrained you he said now you're gonna have relationships with limitation I'm only gonna put people in it that can handle it if one person catch this you'll be blessed all of y'all might be in the same boat but it's how we act while we in the boat that determines. That's why one woman can lose her mind over he left. Another woman laughs and says next. You can be in the same boat. And the difference in who's chosen is how you act in that boat. Some people are jealous of us and we don't even know why. Because we know we going through hell but we don't look like it so I speak to my three members even though there's thousands up in here to the third tier I'll tell you they don't like you and they never gonna like you so if they don't like you and they're jealous give them a reason achieve in every area that you can and leave an inheritance for your children's children and stop worrying about these stowaways People on a free ride got in on your name. They don't even have a name strong enough to get a ticket. Anybody in here that people got in your business and you don't know and they're lying on you, catch this and then jump for you. The Lord says the only reason why people listen to what was said about you is your name is that important. If you didn't have a future, they'd be like, who that? We don't care. But when they care, it's because the devil in them know you next. Yeah, my last few minutes is on. My last few minutes, let me hear a B, please. My last few minutes. My Lord. All right. And my last few minutes is on verse 24 e, verse 24 please but the boat was now in the midst of the sea bishop if this makes sense then just throw me a high five and I'll bring it in how long have you and I Bishop Morton Bishop Noel Jones all the names that we all know fancy and look up to preach this text over the years probably 
more than we can count. But when I went to school and I really started pay, paying real deep attention to the scripture, pulling out things that other people avoid so they can get to the shout, I found something to shout about, but I'm a challenge thinkers. And here where we find out who are going to be the wealthy worshipers versus the employed praisers, right? Because when you're in your season, you are equipped to pay other people's salaries and not hurt yourself. Giving no longer takes from you. But catch this. I'm going to see if Bishop gives me a high five because if not, I fail after all this powerful stuff. The scripture speaks for itself normally. I'm going to see if one of my pastors or friends catch it. We have preached so long about the 12 disciples in, in the storm. The truth is, and I'm going to see who catches it and gets happy, they are not in the storm. The boat is. It didn't say, and they are in the storm. It says, and now the boat. Now, this is where I'm about to preach you. I'm going to say three things, and then I want to hoop it out and leave and just brag that I enjoy being here. But I hope he catch this because this is for him and all of you that still need it, you will catch this. The only reason why you are experiencing the storm is because of the people you're carrying. The storm is after the boat because of who it's carrying. The disciples, I hope you catch this, are not in the storms, they're feeling the effects. We done gave Peter credit, Jesus walking on water. What about the vessel that God charged to hold them? Make sure, I wish I had a tongue, that they get where I told them they would go. And if anything loses its life, it better be you. And some of these men and women of God that are preachers won't jump on this, but you should. You are not a passenger. You're the vessel. And God is trusting you with the lives of future people. So the storm wants to kill you because if it breaks you, it gets to drown everybody else. That's why you that are screaming, it's impossible for you to have a nervous breakdown. you Lord Jesus that your entire family's safety is based upon you not breaking down and that the reason why the devil's after you is you're the chosen one and the reason why he's really mad like the color purple for those who will scream is your testimony is all oh, my life I had to fight I'm about to close it was now in the middle thank you Sean of the sea tossed y'all ain't talking in fifth row by the waves for the wind not against the disciples this is the experience of the vessel And the way you know that you're next for major ministry and publicity is not your gifts, talent, singing, and hooping. It's how you're getting there against contrariness. The money ain't coming in right. Major people leaving. Folk leaving you stranded. But God said, tell the real praiser, onward Christian soldier. Uh -oh. Y'all quiet. I want to preach, but y'all playing with me. Marching as to war with the cross of Jesus going on before. If God qualified you, there's no way you're not going to make it. 
Why don't you tell somebody I'll be there in 72 hours? It is not by might. I'm sorry, I've been neglecting y'all. Nor by power. Come on. But by my spirit. Say if the Lord. Say if the Lord of hope. Y'all talk of me. I'm sorry. It's verse 24. So me and Bishop can tag team this in and close this. The boat. In the real version, it says the ship. Can no boat really hold 12 grown men? This is just a nice way. Like, ain't no nice way to say you broke. Ain't no nice way to say, oh, he just cheated. Some of y'all so saved, you trying to be nice to what bothers you. But the truth is, for anybody that's saved with a mind, you ain't in no boat. You in a ship. You stuck in a ship. Can't keep saying ship too long, you might mess up, but... You ain't in no boat. That was the little Baptist side of me. You. You're in the King James is the real verse says ship and it's ship for a reason. Boats and ships are not made alike. A storm can throw a boat capsize it but a ship has different dynamics to it that it won't tip it it just wave it won't tip as long as everybody in it carries their own weight So you tell certain people you go to the back because you heavier. You come up front. You stand to the right. And God said, tell the real praiser by 72 hours, you'll be positioned to get where you You stand here. You stand here. And that's why full gospel is about to become the greatest fellowship because you're going to position folk. You stand here. You said, it's not that you're in the back because you ain't gifted. That's where I need your weight. And certain folk are just upset that God pulled Peter from the back of the boat. All the way to the front. During the time of storm. About to preach myself happy now. Put that verse up there. What if, and I'm closing, what if the boat could talk? I wish I had five people that knew I was trying to find the key. What if? <laughs> the boat could talk. Maybe we would hear things like this, and I'm going to see if somebody catch it. The boat probably said to them, if y'all really know who he is, you need to learn to trust what he put you in. that he won't bring us out of I need y'all to help me talk to each other and tell your neighbor I'll be out of it in 72 hours tell him I should have been there already but something arose that I didn't see coming a storm number two we almost had the key we have to, some of y'all standing just because you don't want to look out of order. But you that are standing because you're in order, y'all going to see something in about 72 hours. Number two is, this is not the same story when Jesus was on the boat and the storm came and they woke him up and he said, peace be still. Jesus is not on board with them for this storm. He's behind giving the past a lecture.
Oh, y'all slow, y'all. But he rebuked my Lord that storm by saying, peace be still. You got to catch this, scales, because you know I love you. But this storm that they're in, for anybody who catch it, was unrebukable. It continues the whole story. Because this one is of God. See, you link every problem to a demon. But this storm has an assignment. Forget the boat. The assignment of the storm for the loudest yeller who be blessed is to slow you down till Jesus catch up with you. You will never say you made it without God. Yeah. If it had not been, was I had church for the Lord on our side? Well, where would we be? Jesus, I'm not there, gave them permission. Go. But he didn't tell them that they would get there without him. He held a meeting with the storm. Need you when they get halfway there. I'm about to come to them because y'all don't look. But to cause some issues that will slow them down and teach them the urgency of going places without me. Y'all know some of you standing there ain't moving the cameras on you. You look crazy when the camera zoom by. Jesus told the storm, slow them down until I get there. The boat, that's my key, probably told them if he could talk for those who will help me preach. You should trust him enough like I do. To be able to tell the storm you're in, one thing that if I could talk as the ship, I would tell them. And I'm going to make all of y'all learn from the ship. And if you catch this, you got one revelation left, but you got to get excited because it's going to become you. The ship is the only thing in a story that can tell the storm, I'm built for this. When my creator designed me, he designed me to get places, whether it's smooth sailing or whether it's tumultuous. If the boat, my Lord, could talk to them. And right now, some of y'all are not with me, but you need to hear this. You ain't coming out of the storm until you hear your situation make sense. Why is the devil after you and nobody else? Oh, mm, oh, 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 Lord, you need to find one stowaway or a passenger that looks nice and hold their hand and tell them it's going to make sense after a while. Why is the devil always picking on you and I? When I stop talking, you talk. Uh -huh. uh, oh, yes. Here is Here's the boat, y'all. Experiencing a storm, but he has an assignment from God. That's it. The assignment is uh, make sure the people that I trusted you with make it to the other side. Everybody first that are members of Mount Zion, you're about to make it uh, to the other side. And when somebody questions you, how did you make it? You'll be able to look them in the face. I wish I had a preaching church and tell them I came to Jesus. Yeah, just ask 
I was. I was weary. Yes, I was. Give me a little more. Again on the mic. I was worn. And I was sad. But I found in him. You got to find that one person that don't mind you acting crazy. A resting place. And he. He has made uh, me glad. Uh, some of y'all still ain't there. But find somebody and tell them uh, I can't lie to you. Tell them for the past two to three years, uh, it's been a lot of waves headed in my direction. And I didn't know how I was going to come out of it. Uh, but tell your neighbor the way I came out of it. Uh, is I rehearsed the words to an old song. I looked at my situation and I began to talk to it. And I told my situation the reason why I made it is Father. I'm almost ready for your tonto. Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help I know you grab somebody's hand like you love them and look them in the face and repeat after me tonight and say neighbor neighbor congratulations on surviving the worst season of your life Tell them how did you make it? Tell them weeping may endure. Oh, y'all ain't talk. Weeping may endure for a night. But joy, 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 joy. Take your right hand if you look happy the person near you away from you and say neighbor it's not that I don't like you but in the situation that I'm in I don't need nobody this close to me that won't help me praise my God but tell me if you're gonna come back over here you gotta have something to say like look where the love look where the love where the Lord has brought me from has he brought you has he kept you did he lead you did he guide you did he pick you up did he turn you my time is up bishop's been patient listen just look at two people and tell them you're coming out of it alive and you're gonna look like you've never been in it and when you get everything God has for you you tell your enemy I deserve this because I've been through the storm been through the rain been through hard through the water some let me close this son yeah gotta close some through the water some through the flood some through great trials but all through the blood don't know how I made it but he was with me don't play no more Sean yet because we got to close he was with us he was with us he's looking at you he was with you I'm gonna close like this and see if you catch it 
the ship probably told them what the topic of this sermon is to 50 of you and now thousands of you who will scream on this the Lord said from this day forward your new title over your life like the ship for those who catch it is I'm built to last you can't give up because you're created to do what you're doing and for those who are chosen you have no options you you don't want to talk to me you have no options now as sure. As we're closing and you're standing, those who will it, but if you're 60 and over and don't want to or holding the baby, you can sit. But if you're near somebody who looks like they're pleasant, hold their hand. Don't stretch far. If they don't want to hold your hand when it's empty, tell them don't reach for it when it's full. Because God's about to put a lot in your hands. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're being visited by angels. I guess they're coming to assist us on our journey. To be the sail when there was none. Now, my prophetic close, not calling names, but closing the text with something that makes sense. But you have to respond if you catch it because I no longer will ask you to because I finished and I made it through the sinus, sinus issue for those who prayed for me. Thank you. But catch this. No, really, it's really bad. But you have to hear the clothes and you got to get excited. The ship only had one concern, Pastor Scales, and that is I can't be the only ship in the Bible that let him down. Because the one in Acts broke up. Oh, yeah. Cracked up. Was irreparable. And drop Paul off where he could still get bit by a snake. But where you're going, ain't no snakes left. Oh, good God, right? The Lord's taking all the snakes and serpents out of your life. I love this side, and I love y'all. But hear this and hear it clear. Sound men, make sure they can hear every word because this is very important now. And don't miss out on any of this. I won't even yell anymore. Listen, thank you. Two is this. They were in the midst. That word midst, because you're a great Bible teacher, I watch you often, means middle. From where they were to where they had to go was an eight-mile trip, which means if they were in the midst, the ship was in the midst, it was four miles from getting there, or four miles to going back and the reason why some of you are back where you started is you went in the direction the wind was blowing and it's just easier to go back to familiar than to embrace the fantasy of your faith oh y'all here some of you are just afraid of the unknown That's why you keep going back to him and he still don't have a job because you don't think there's something better over there that will take you and your kids. That's why you're going through a storm so you qualify for the future. And the third thing, but not last and not least, but look at me with expectation. The storm never stops the entire story until peter goes to jesus help me and then when they walk back to the ship it stops the storm could not be rebuked because this assignment was to get people out of the boat some of y'all are waiting for things to calm down watch one disciple said, Bishop, within five minutes, I'll give you the mic. One disciple said, it is the Lord. The others thought it was a ghost. But the one that said it was God, I wish somebody could have for me, never made a move. Peter did. Peter said, you say it's God? Lord, if it be you, bid me to come. 
And what is disgraceful for a yelling preacher is all of y'all hearing from God but not making no moves. It's just crazy. Everybody here. Then you get upset with what you hear and what we do. They heard me say it. You're talking. You're not walking. We don't talk by faith. Peter didn't recognize Jesus, but the person that did, Peter said, are you sure? Said the beloved disciple. He said, yeah. Peter said, so you know it's him and you still going to stay here? Peter said, there is no reward without risk. That's why he didn't say, I know it's God. He said, if it be that. Lord, if this house is mine, I'm going to get it even without the money. And even if it ain't yours, at least you lived in it for 30 days, you know. But to stay where you are waiting for your money to change, you're going to be there forever. That's why there's some folks still stuck in Section 8. And their children. And their children's children. In the same you're holding that person's hand because you're going to need them. Watch this. Bishop might high-five me on this. Even though it was the worst storm that they ever experienced and it got worse as Peter got closer to God. You missed it. It got worse as he got closer to God. So all of you that's going through more than ever is because you're closer than ever. See, once it can be explained, you no longer give it attention. The devil's after your faith because he knows you're close to where you're going. And now he's trying to make you panic so you can sink. Hey, two things, Bishop. If this makes sense, act like you're coming to high five me. Then I feel like I did well. Peter could swim and when he was sinking, sinking is not sunk nor sank. Sunk is sinking, finishing his process. Sinking is drowning in process, whatever. But here goes what's crazy. He did not try to swim even though he's a fisherman. Peter didn't even try to save his own life. And if anybody jump on this watch, Peter proves that I shouldn't have to do nothing when you invited me out here. If the Lord gives you the house, you don't work three jobs. You tell it. The Lord's about to give you a season that's going to take no extra effort. Sound like you. I got this stuff from you. And last but not least, this is where he's going to hug me in the bank. My theologian, and I'm done now. My theologian who's watching us tonight, he's a rabbi. He's a Jew. We debate my sermons all the time. Because he says preachers are too hyped without help. He says, when I watch some of them, I love their five minute opening and the rest is fluff. I'd rather them give me more opening and five minutes of fluff. So I gave you all five minutes of fluff on the hoop. But listen, he told me Peter never walked on water. Everybody got quiet in the whole church. Look at this. The whole church was like, your teacher crazy. <laughs> Truth is, when Bishop went to school and I went to school and a few of you were blessed to go to seminary or school of divinity, you will find out that the Red Sea back in the days of Moses was only two inches deep of water. But we still have to believe he drowned the army in two inches of water. Just like he can take your small check and pay off all the bills. You know, he don't have to. He don't need enough water. Watch now. So either way, I'm still going to believe God did what his word says. So he said, Peter didn't walk on water. I'm about to run. And I said he did. Then he said he didn't. Then I said he did. Then he brought up stats. And he knows more about history than I. And I don't like to fight people who know their craft. So I said, all right. I waited two days. I called him back. I said, all right. I got it. He didn't walk on water. He said, yes, he did. I said, what? He said, you're so threatened by my information. 
that you're throwing away your revelation that comes through relationship. You. He said, he said, Todd, you're right and I'm right. If one of these young men don't run because you haven't ran yet, which is why your whole ministry is in your head, never into motion. You're too young not to move. But he said to me, I'm definitely right and so are you. He said, put it together and catch this. He said, Peter said, Lord, if it be thou bid me to come to you, read it exactly on the water. He asked specifically, I want to come to you on the water, not in the boat. I want to get out from everybody else and do something that they're afraid to do. I want to come to you in a way that I see you approaching me. I want people to be able to say, I walked like Jesus. Uh -oh. And Jesus is more visible by how you survive your storm. But here goes the point. Here goes the point for the, those who will yell and then get blessed. The Bible lets me know he walked on water, but my teacher said, what does the Bible say? It said, and Jesus said, come. Therefore, put them together, and this is what you get for everybody who needs a miracle in 72 hours. And that is this. He walked on the water, but really he stepped out on God's word. So, the word of God was his surfboard. Surfboard. He stepped on the word and God said, as long as you stay on the word and the storm comes, the word won't fail you. Just... Sometimes it'll make folk admire you. Look at them. They having fun on the waves. He stood on the word of God, which just so happened to include the water. My daddy's watching. Now you're holding hands for the real last few seconds and you're going to look like you're wealthy. Whatever that looks like is no slouch shoulders. Wealth has a certain stare, certain swag. My father was one of the first African-American partners on Wall Street to a Jewish firm. He was a stockbroker and then he became senior partner of a firm called Benjamin Jacobson and Sons, which now is called Goldman and Sachs. My daddy never went to school for this, never studied, never went to college. He was blessed by the intervention of the Holy Spirit, allowing him to go through a major racist issue that made a Jewish man hire him because of what his son did to him. And see, y'all miss, and it put Aaron Hall Jr. in a favorable position to become the first African-American uh, stockbroken man to a Jewish firm. My father said, Todd, you always get this revelation. What you get out of the last bit? I said this, and this I'm prophesying to every person in here. I said, the Lord said, some of your storms are going to cease when he does for you. Catch it, and you better go off, Stephen Brown. When he does for us what he did for Peter, ask me what? what? All right, you didn't ask. Ask me what? what? And you got to catch this and get happy. He says, tell them after the storm and we get back to the boat, they will be able to say, I did for them what I did for Peter, and that is I made their liquid solid. If some of y'all just had a little more money, you wouldn't care about who don't like you, who left you, because I got too much to do. Peter out of the whole boat is the only one Jesus is always making his net break. He keeps his liquid solid. Don't let that hand go. That's a millionaire you let go. White people would have been holding. Hold my hand, brother. Ask her. Hold my hand. Oh, I love crayons. They draw beautiful pictures. But we let go of each other too easy. Listen. Peter's liquid became solid. When you have bad credit, you need collateral to still get it. And sometimes the bank will ignore a bad name if you got strong liquidity. Yeah. Right. The Lord said he made you an hour and 40 minutes ago say debt free. Yeah. Now you're about to step out on it. Yeah. And God said what would have drowned you is going to hold. Yeah. As long as you keep Jesus in focus. Yeah. Your money is going to start growing. 
Bishop, you and your wife, thank you. High five me on this, Bishop Lockett, if it makes sense. When you make a cake and you stir the mix, the whole mix, when it's properly beat, it is literally liquid until it comes out the fire. And the Lord said, when it comes out, it's now a hard, tasty thing. And the way you know it's ready is when it's poked, you can't get no crumbs out. And some of y'all, folk used to get on your nerve, you're too wealthy to respond. Oh, what's that? Your liquid is about to become. I wanted the mic at full gospel during that offering time just to say that, but I got it at Mount Zion. Your liquid. Is about to tell two people that and see how they act. My liquid is solid. My liquid is solid. Tell them my name may be messed up, but my liquid is solid. My, my name, they may not like my name, but they're going to respect me because I'm successful. My liquid is solid. Hold hands. I'm done. I've never done this. I asked your bishop. Was there anything I needed to do, not do, shouldn't do? And all he said to me, he must trust me, is let the Lord use you. He looked me in my face, and I know that's not Bishop Walker, because Bishop Walker comes with rules. He think I don't know him, but the Holy Ghost showed me where I was going. He comes with specifics because he studied it. He knows what the outcome and what he wants to get. But he took the chains off of the gift of the prophetic. Because he needs y'all to be equipped for where he's taking y'all next. He's got two ships. Mount Zion and full gospel. He's got the Minta, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria. Which means who know what he's going to discover next. His wife might discover the cure for cancer. I said that for real. I wasn't playing. I see a team of ladies sitting with you discussing something. And it's going to cure it in the baby before it's born. You're going to be super rich. Richer than the church. You struck gold. Because of her humility, her ministry is behind the scenes. But I see medicine mixed with miraculous intervention. I told him he thought I was crazy, but I'm going to say it. I said, being that everything he touches is just seemingly growing, I said he needs to charge Periscope for using them. They should sponsor him. Y'all better talk because they looking right now. A periscope. See, we have not because we don't position ourselves. Any man that can get a thousand followers in four days, then get another thousand in two days, then a thousand in a week, and then ask for eight thousand, then somebody say you have it by Sunday. I've been watching you. I threw up 10 hearts. I didn't know how to do it. I just started pressing the screen. Heart, heart, 